Michael Jackson took me to the Rayborn building on Capitol Hill on the 31st day of March. April, no, of March. March. It was March. 31st day of March of 204. I said, why are you taking me there? Because you curate. I said, but what makes you think that they are interested in that? What makes you think that the world is interested? I don't care if it's any country in the world, they are not interested, especially Africa. They were never interested. AIDS, AIDS isn't killing Africa. Hepatitis C is killing Africa. All of West Africa is red line for hepatitis C. What you talking about? But they're Muslims. So they have to eat the Muslim food, which is goats and lamb. Go tell them that the Arabs pay food, which is goats and lamb. Go tell them that the Arabs played a trick on their brain. You cannot do that. Me, I remain the son of the jungle woman. The jungle woman that didn't have any clothes on. Yeah, I am her son. I stuck with her and she liberated me. You have to hear this. One morning, I woke up and I heard the music that was playing. You know how you turn your radio on and you're sleeping, but the music on the radio would influence you and you dream that you're seeing the artist is playing, right? You ever had that happen to you? This morning, I'm listening to John Coltrane. Four o'clock in the morning on channel 850 on the TV. I'm sleeping and I'm hearing John Coltrane playing interstellar space. But then something was happening while this music was playing. I was looking at a black woman doing this from behind a tree. <laughs> I woke up and I didn't know how to interpret that dream. But then I was leaving that morning for Los Angeles. As I got to the airport, the governor was there. The governor said, that's him. That's the man that cured a cedar of leukemia. That's the man I'm talking about. The governor had a lot of people around him. So I went, I was leaving for Los Angeles. He was leaving for the capital. He didn't know that we were gonna meet that morning. So they was talking to me and asking me questions. Finally, two men that were standing away from me they were white men from the United States. They came up to me and said, well, we have heard of your miracle cures. I said, sir, I don't even know what a miracle is. It's best to perform one. I just happened to cure leukemia. That's not a miracle to you, maybe. Because your school of thought have you to believe that curing these diseases is one great big feat. No, it's simple common sense. I'm an African. Now this is where the naked woman gonna come out. They said to me, we have heard of your miracle cures, but have you been saved? You see? <laughs> right there, I consider that an imposition. Why do you take the liberty to believe that I'm one of those that have accepted your philosophy that I have to be saved. I say, from what? The man politely answered and said, from your sins, of course. I said, wait just a minute. I said, you know, man, while you guys were standing over there, I said, and I looked at you both, and I said, two very intelligent young men. But now I have to question that. He said, why? I said, well, because the color of my skin should have prevented you from asking me that question, have I been saved? 
He said, what does the color of the skin have to do with anything? I say, it has to do with everything. I am the son of a woman that was taken away from the forest of Africa. She, to begin with, she didn't have any clothes on. But she didn't have any alcohol. And she didn't have any prostitution. And she didn't have any supermarkets. And she didn't have a hospital. And she didn't need anything that God didn't make. And she didn't have any money. So all these things constitute sin. So my mother in the jungles was sinless. How did I become sinful? You cut it out. You stop that. We have to begin to change our diet because this diet here of blood and starch is all we eat. That is all we eat. And then with this diet of blood and starch, which confounds the hormonal structure, we have the nerve to tell each other's brother, you were wrong. I'm wrong. I mean, where did you get that from? I'm wrong. You, you've been eating blood and starch and you're going to tell me I'm wrong. No. We got to stop it. Because the blood and starch is why I couldn't penetrate Africa. So, in, you, you forgot, right? I'm in the Rayborn building. Who is present? Sheila Jackson Lee. From Texas, right? John Conyers. Illinois. Of Detroit? Jesse Jackson Jr. from the House of Appropriation. Our most beloved President Bush. <laughs> no, we have to give him credit. And no African government ever given me the privilege to practice herbology. Bush did. Bush appropriated five billion dollars to fight AIDS in Africa, right? And the African government didn't appropriate one dime. They didn't want their brother to do it for free. So Bush, Bush stands out way above there. Bush gave five billion dollars and Jesse Jackson Jr. is there. So when I go to the podium and I say, fellas, you all don't have to look for the cure of AIDS anymore. Here it is. Jesse Jackson Jr. did this. <laughs> I said, I'm going to talk about this. I have to write about this in my book. Because you, not me, but you and I believe in the leaders. We hope that they could do something, right? Well, they had a chance. So, 17 African ambassadors. Only one came to me from Mali. The only man came to me and said, Dr. Sebi, I, uh, I have to respect your position. And I appreciate your position. You have proven that you cure AIDS, and I would like for you to go to Mali. But that's not the country I was talking about previously. He just presented himself that day. But Jesse Jackson Jr. didn't tell you that I could raise, right? He didn't tell his daddy either, isn't it? And Ms. Sheila Jackson, he didn't talk about it, right? And so did John Conyers. So who gives a damn? You see? But that's good. That's good. We don't need leaders, isn't it? So we're going to do it. Because we're doing it now. Because those black women I'm talking about, there's one sitting there. They are going to tell the world we can raise. But last night, Clinton and Sanjay Gupta is on CNN talking about the end of AIDS. How about the end of sickle cell? How about the end of lupus? How about the end of herpes? How about the end of blindness? They, don't, they, they didn't find those, but they find the end of AIDS. How is that possible? Are we going to buy that too? Are we going to let them continue to say that there is no cure for AIDS when your brother is curing it? So we are guilty. We are the ones that's guilty, not the leaders. 
because they're sick. All the leaders are sick. You can look at them and tell they're sick. So we have to forget about the leaders, right? So which animal in the forest follows a male? None, right? They all follow females. So how did we begin to follow males? <laughs> I mean, that, that was the most, look, the one thing I wanted in my life was a woman laying by me as my significant other or my wife that she didn't have a god or a devil in her brain that woman is sitting there because I could not have a woman laying by me and she worshiping something else I mean nothing to her no you worship you that's who you worship that's who we worship in the forest and we were doing quite well because none of us her children could talk about how long did our parents live in the forest of Africa you don't know for millions of years since creation did we have money we live a perpetual vacation <laughs> now I gotta wear this stupid suit on <laughs>